Thanks for joining me for MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're talking about upset and length control techniques, specifically pressure modulation. Today we're talking about upset control. If you remember from previous episodes, we talked about the amount of upset that you get is a result of the weld, and it is the shortening of the two parts uh, as a result of friction welding. If your two parts have equal area, then you're going to get equal amount of upset from both parts, assuming that they're the same material. We also talked about the fact that if I increase the amount of load or weld pressure that I use, that I'm also going to increase the amount of upset that I get because I'm going to convert the energy faster. Conversely, if I decrease the amount of load that I use, I'm going to convert the energy slower and I'm going to end up with less upset in the weld. Well, way back when, Brian Ben from Rolls-Royce decided that he could create an upset control technique using the same principle by closing the loop on that upset control. In order to do so, we need an error signal. So we create a standard inertia weld with no control whatsoever, and we record an upset profile. This is the amount of upset that you get over time. And then we use the new weld that we actually want to control and compare it to the upset profile in order to generate an error signal. We feed that error signal back into the controller, and if I'm getting too much upset, then I want to decrease my weld pressure in order to decrease the amount of upset that I'm getting so that I get zero error signal between the weld and the profile. If I'm getting too little upset, then I want to increase the weld load in order to increase the amount of upset that I'm getting. This allows me to control the amount of upset that I get between the two parts very repeatedly, and therefore I'm closing the loop. Now this is a, an effective technique. It works for upset control. But because of the hydraulic system of a machine responds very slowly, I don't get a whole lot of adjustments. Therefore, my repeatability still has an error band associated with it. In addition to that, the tooling that I'm using can also affect how easy it is to measure the upset as a result of pressure changes. But I can use this technique in inertia welding, direct drive friction welding, or rotary hybrid friction welding. So I have an effective technique, uh, but there are probably room for improvement. Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on this topic or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.